Hi. Um, it's been a while, huh? I feel like it's been forever since I've uh, done a little video clip and um, time is, has become more strange than it has been in the past. Uh, for those of you who um, don't know, I, I left the US, um, my husband and I sold our home and we had uh, nowhere we really wanted to go, many places we wanted to explore. And we knew we didn't wanna settle somewhere. So we've been traveling since, let's see, February when we sold the home and we were in uh, Egypt and then Istanbul and Switzerland. And uh, we spent over just about two months on Mallorca and now we're in the Canary Islands. And um, so I have wanted to connect, but the internet has been really iffy in so many places. Um, so let's hope, I'm hoping anyway, that, that uh, uh, it, it's, it, it lasts for this chat. Having traveled and, and spent time in so many places, it's, it's so physically clear that, you know, everything is shifting. There is only uncertainty. Um, how many times we had to look, can we get into that country? What do we need to get in that country? You know, if we go there, will we be able to get into the next country? All of these these different um, different uh, situations with things in the past that were just easy. And you know, I, I'm I'm in Europe, so I've been watching what's happening in the news in the different countries of Europe and also around the world, and. Uh, it's really something. I'm so glad I understand about 2027. Things are really breaking down. The old patterns don't work. You know, uh, the people that who are running the countries really don't know what's going on. You know, I remember when COVID began back uh, uh, in the first lockdown in March of 2020, and I, I had two immersions planned, and it was like. Oh, I don't know about that a summer one, um, but maybe, you know, I really thought there was a good chance and for sure the one in, in the fall. Now it's like, wow, this is ongoing, huh? This is, this is, this is really something that's shifting all of humanity and how we live in this world. Um, I've also been aware of uh, this um, anger and hatred and this one against that one and this, this, it feels like uh, what was a gap before the division between this type or that type or whatever, that everything is becoming more divided. And I really went back into uh, all of my 2027 notes and, and all that I've saved from, uh, from the talks I've given on 2027. And um, I was looking for what, what is it? You know, it, it, it's not that, it, well, it's a little that, it's a little this. And for those of you who don't know that on my website, I, I have a, a workshop, a two day workshop over four hours that I did online about 2027. 
And um, I know that it's helped a lot of people understand more what's happening now because we are really in a huge shift. So just in case uh, you didn't know about it, I wanted to tell you that. Um, so I looked, I looked at my slides, I looked at my notes, I looked at, you know, uh, uh, things Ra had said, uh, I looked everywhere, you know, and other than it really being obvious that everything's breaking down and all the old patterns don't work, what was, what was causing this huge division? I mean, you know, from, uh, from all the, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the rearing of the head, the ugly head of racism to masks or no masks, vaccination or no vaccination. You know, I know in the US Trump or not Trump, you know, I mean, there was all this, this and that. And then it hit me, ah, this is the mind. This is all the mind, the mind divides. And the mind is always this or it's that, and it's opposed or for. So it's almost as if along with 2027 and all that we're um, seeing breaking down as the shift happens, you know, the old is going out, but it's not going to just happen at 2027. It takes all these years for this huge 400 year cogwheel train, you know, that's been going along, going along. It can't just stop on a dime. So we're already shifting into that. And it's gonna take time even after 2027 to really be in it. Um, so anyway, um, I, it was just so clear that this, it's the mind. And you know, the chart that we all have, it has nine centers, huh? And we're really seven centered humans transitioning into the ninth century. And for me, I can really see that having lived myself for so many years, I feel ninth centered. But just because there's a ninth centered chart doesn't mean that everyone on the planet is ninth centered. Everyone's living that seven centered life. And we know that seven centered life was all mental. It was all the mind, it had to be. We needed that. We needed what the mind can bring. And the mind's not a bad guy. I love my mind. I just don't let it run my life. But that's not true for many people. Most people's minds run their lives. So this is what I saw that the seven centered human is becoming obsolete because, you know, in 2027, a, a, a new type of being comes in. Humans will still be born until the end, but but it's our time is kind of over. It's it's the new that's coming. That's that's their time. But this seven centered life that was goal oriented and had to get somewhere, even in the spiritual world, when you look at the chakra system, the seven centered chakra system, it's all about the energy moving upwards and out the crown chakra so that one can be enlightened. One can, you know, there was a goal. Nine centered for me is, has no goal. Nine centered is you just relax into who you are, which, for me is waking up. Oh, okay. well, I won't say it, but I, I don't really care at all about enlightenment. <laughs> For me, it's just become this other thing that the mind desires or wants. And anyway, I don't want to go into all that. Um, but the seven centered, the mind, this is what I'm seeing. You know, when I read this story and that story, and this happened on the plane and this protest and the horrible things that are happening on the planet, this, the, this, this group opposed this group and all of this, that 
is really the mind and it's almost like you know the 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 culmination of of something it's it's like it gets greater it feels like before it falls apart now i don't think the mind will ever stop running uh, our planet i mean unfortunately i don't think that that's ever going to happen it's so powerful this mind it has you know i know for myself even though my god i did so much meditation before my experiment i mean i went to india i was with osho i mean i i i i understood the mind with what i understood back then but it wasn't really until i started living my strategy and making decisions based on my inner authority that I got to really see the mind for what it was, what it is. It ran my life, even, even with all the meditating I did. It disguised itself as my heart, so I was following my feelings. Um, I had no idea that everything I said to myself in words about myself and my life and what I thought and I wanted this and I should do this and all. I had no idea it was all my mind. It really was living my experiment that really brought that to the surface and I got to see that it was all my mind. So that's what I see in the world. I just see this mind <laughs> of this group or these people opposing the mind of these people. And it's the mind fighting mind, the this and the that. And yes, there's all these shifts that are coming. There's all the keys that are changing that will open the locks of love and direction for humanity. But there's also this other aspect that I see that I couldn't, I couldn't pinpoint in the keys and the locks shifting. And then it was like, oh, wow, this is, it's so obvious. This is really um, the mind screaming. I mean, and then, you know, you have COVID and the lockdown and and it's almost like there's um, so many people out there are at this point, like a breaking point. Or, you know, if, if, if there was a little um, mental instability, wow. I mean, I mean Ben, it's, it's like these people are over the edge because that's all there is for so many people. It's just their mind. And the mind believes it's right and everyone else is wrong. I mean, it's something to really see. And this is what I love so much about oh, living me. Oh, wow. Is that whatever is my truth, it's just my truth. I don't need anyone to agree with me. I don't need to try to talk anyone into seeing what I see because it's ridiculous. How can someone see what I see? They're going to see what they see. But when you take away the veil of the mind, it's no longer this homogenized seeing. It's really unique seeing. And this is what's so, um, oh, such a gift, such a gift to I never expected this. <laughs> I never thought I would be so solid within myself, be so stable within myself, to be able to move in the world as I'm moving. Now, basically, I have no home. I mean, my home right now is my hotel room. I found a wall that didn't show the bed and everything else, <laughs> but it's, it's my hotel room. And just, 
you know. You know, I was I was in the spiritual world for so long, 25 years before human design. And I had so many ideas about uh, what enlightenment was. You know, I would look at Osho or uh, Papaji, Punjaji, or Krishnamurti, or all of these people that I sat with. And um, I would look at them and, and and uh, my mind thought it would be something like that or whatever. And, and I think that this is the, this is the trap because we can't look at anyone else. You know, I have some people who say, you know, if I share something, they'll say, I'm not there yet. I'm not where you are yet. And I'm like, Oh, you can never be where I am. Only I can be here. You'll be where you are. You know, we're all unique. And, and when we live that uniqueness, we are not going to look like anyone else. We're not going to say the same things. We're not going to see the same things. But there will be something that I think will be shared within. It's that inner stability that space inside, the being present, just being present without all the just present as oneself. You know, I mean, there's, there's no goal and we were born being natural. No, we were born. It's within us. It's just been covered over. It's not like we have to go find something. It's it's inside. And for me, the, the what the experiment did was it just, you know, the layers of conditioning that hid my natural being just fell apart. And sometimes, yes, it felt like they were ripped away. I mean, this experiment's not easy. It's pretty painful at times because we've lived a certain way for however long we've been alive. So, I mean, in a way, we died to that, how we've lived or the person we thought we were. But inside is, is that space that is, is, is truly our natural state. And then, you know, it's just there. And um, I only know this from now, okay? I didn't know it when I started. All I knew was, oh my God, this is really hard. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I ever did. But I can look back now and laugh. I wasn't laughing a lot. I mean, I, mean, I was freaked. I was you know, wondering if anyone would still be in my life because they really liked who I was, not who I really am. And a lot of people fell away and that was just part of it, you know. Um, <laughs> what I find really Amazing is I always cared what people thought of me. I did. I mean, open solar plex, open heart, open mind. And I just don't care anymore. I just watch, you know? It's almost like I can pick up, walk by someone, you know? It's like, it's, it's just a game. It's just a movie to watch. And... I feel so lucky to be stable within. I mean, this to me is what 
I think the, the human design experiment of strategy and authority can really bring it's like, you know, we're, we're living out the conditioning, we're living out all these thematics of the open centers and to, to, and so you know there's this instability because those open centers are always being uh, programmed by others. And, and then we fall into the conditioning of how to behave with that coming in. So when those open centers, they still are taking in from the other, there's no way to protect or to stop that, but um, you know it's not you and, and the old reactions and the old way that, uh, for me that I dealt with all that was, was um, uh, no longer happening. So yes, things come in, but I, I, know, I know me in the sense, I know my frequency. So stuff coming in, it's just not the same. And so this brings the stability within, no matter if we have, um, you know, seven open centers or nine open centers or no opens, you know, it, it, we were born to live whatever our design is. I mean, we were born to live that. And in the beginning, it's really hard because we haven't lived that. We've lived everything else but that. And so this, the, the seven years are really the cellular transformation that needs to take place because it's in the body. It's not a new concept for the mind to believe. It actually has to happen in the body, in the cells of the body. And then it's it just becomes more and more stable. I mean. It's, it's, it's such a gift, it's such a gift. And um, yeah, I don't, uh, it's kind of funny with doing all, all this traveling is um, I hardly ever think of human design. That's why you <laughs> hardly hear from me. I mean, it's like once in a while, it's like, oh, I haven't sent an email, oh, you know. <laughs> But until the energy arises, I, ha I can't do anything. I'm not going to let my mind tell me I should. I mean, it does. It does say you should send an email, but my body doesn't obey my mind anymore. And that's really cool. That's really cool. And there's no guilt. And that's really cool. Um, it's, been, it's been a precious time. You know, I don't live my life looking at myself and my life through the eyes of human design. I just live me. You know, that's it. There's, there's nothing else. And um, yeah, it's, it's such an amazing, amazing gift. Oh my God, you know. Um, I, I got an email from someone who's just beginning the journey and she's reading my book and she wrote something about um, being 50. And, uh, and I thought, wow, yes, but it doesn't really matter <laughs> when we begin. I mean, even living 10 years as oneself is precious or five or one. I mean, I remember how I felt when I really started aligning within. Oh my God, just having a cup of coffee as myself was better than any Satori I ever had. I mean it. Yeah, it's been it's been an amazing experience and uh Yeah, I just wish it for others. Yeah. It's 
that's quite something <laughs> because it's nothing. <laughs> it's not special. It's just nothing. <laughs> it's just relaxing into oneself and not believing the mind. Okay, well, <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm not emotional and, and it's interesting when tears come, it's either if I see something or something is so beautiful that tears, or if, if I'm speaking a truth and then the tears come. So anyway, love to you all and enjoy your ride. And um, until next time, whenever that may be, Take care. Bye.